I'm going to continue with Corona, False Alarm. I'm going to um, just pick up from the last paragraph that I read on my previous video and the video will only be about 20 minutes long because my videos keep cutting out after that time. So the Merkel mantra chanted day and night by her ardent followers protecting the health of our citizens must at all costs remain our supreme goal. Honourable as this may sound, it betrays an alarming inability to comprehend the essence of public welfare. The following numbers have already been presented, but because of their importance, they will be repeated here. During the course of this entire epidemic, a maximum number of 10 in 10,000 over 80 year olds have died with or from the virus. The number of true COVID deaths cannot be higher than one to two per 10,000. How many human lives were really prolonged by the horrendous measures? Maybe two to four per 10,000 or even four to eight, but definitely not more. And at what cost? The one employee of the GMI who dared to compile an analysis of the collateral damage to the healthcare system was suspended. The government was not interested. Nothing can replace our human life, but what are the consequences for health and welfare of the populace if the economy collapses and people are confronted with the end of their existence? Economic consequences. It will strike all countries the global economic crisis could plunge 500 million people into poverty, so stated in a position paper by the United Nations. The US Federal Reserve expects a dramatic decline of up to 30% in America economic performance. In American economic performance, Fed Director Jerome Powell assures assumes a 20% to 25% increase in the unemployment rate. Almost 36.5 million people have lost their jobs. It is the most traumatic job loss in the history of the US economy, says Gregory Dacos, US Chief Economist of the Oxford Economic Institute. The EU Commission predicts a deep recession of historic magnitude for Europe. According to their prognosis, the economy will shrink a good 7% and will not completely recover in the next year. In Germany too, the economy is starting to crumble. Since too, the economy is starting to crumble. Since the second half of March, it is, da it is down to 80% of normal economic performance for about 10 million employees. Without short time work, the unemployment rate would have increased dramatically, similar to the US. In April, we have only 300,000 additional unemployed, but this will not be the end of the story, not by a long shot. The government boasted that there are wavering a weaving safety nets, the greatest rescue package in Germany's history, will help migrate the collateral damage, but the rescue package is ridiculous in relation to the damage that has been done. Countless people are falling through the net. Existence has been destroyed existences have been destroyed and lives have been lost. They cannot be salvaged by safety nets. Disruption to medical care. Many who are ill were afraid to visit hospitals for fear of catching the killer virus. Often older people would rather not be a burden to their doctors who they thought were battling to save COVID-19 patients. Patients requiring medical examinations were turned away. All that was not deemed of viral importance. Cancelled or postponed, medical checkups were not performed, operations were postponed to free up 
capacity for coronavirus patients, domestic violence against women and children increased, the number of suicides rose, drugs and suicide. Following the crisis of 2008, the number of suicides rose in countries all over the world. According to the National Health Group Wellbeing Trust, unemployment, economic downfall and despair could drive could now drive 75,000 Americans to drug abuse and suicide. The Australian government estimates a rise in suicides of 50%, a number 10 times higher than the number of coronavirus deaths. Unemployment and poverty are also predicted to markedly increase suicide rates in Germany. Heart attack and stroke. Unemployment increases the risk of heart attack to an extended comparable to a cigarette, smoking, diabetic and hypertension. But where did all the patients with heart attacks disappear to? Administration to emergency care units dropped 30% as compared to the previous month. Not because the patients were miraculously cured, but because they were terrified of catching the deadly virus in the hospital. Preliminary symptoms were unheeded, even though such symptoms are often the harbinger of deadly attack and need to be closely attended to in hospital. This is the most dangerous development. There are now 50% fewer patients with mild symptoms in the emergency room, explains Dr. Sven uh, Thonke, chief physician of the clinic for neurology in Hanua, Hanua, in the newspaper interview, in a newspaper interview, many pending strokes initially cause mild symptoms such as dizziness, speech, visual problems and muscle weakness. Uh, thonk, there are now 50% fewer patients with mild symptoms in the emergency room. This is extremely worrisome because more often than not, mild symptoms herald the severe stroke that can be rapidly fatal in the emergency is not immediately tended to. Other ailments, according to the Scientific Institute of OAK, German Health Insurance Company, the following diagnosis dropped considerably in April. Fewer respiratory diseases, 47% fewer diseases of the digestive tract, and 29% fewer injuries and poisonings. Care of tumour patients was catastrophic. Monitoring of tumour treatment was no longer conducted at the required level. Control examination were postponed or cancelled. Patients waited in agony for the next appointment, alone with the fears and the single remaining question, how much time was still left for them? Cancelled operations. 30 million elective surgeries were postponed or cancelled worldwide during the first 12 weeks of the pandemic. In 2018, 1.4 million operations were performed on average every month. 50 to 90% of all scheduled operations were postponed or not performed in March, April and May 2020. This translates to at least 2 million operations that would normally have been performed. The consequences must be profound. Further consequences for the elderly. In Germany, more than a thousand people over the age of 80 die every day. While we are taking drastic measures to prevent them from dying of COVID-19, we are making their lives less, less worth living. This cannot be impinged on life expectancy. This cannot but impinge on life expectancy. Quality of life, especially in old age when many friends have already passed on and the body no longer works the way it once did. Life is not about how many more days or years, but about life worth living. That could be accomplished by exercise and remaining active through social contact by taking recreational holidays, visiting events and even shopping sprees with regular visits. 
uh, to the sauna or fitness studio or the daily work walk to the corner cafe. But what happens when all of a sudden the cafe and everything else is closed? No more visits to old friends, no more social events and no visits visitors either. Loneliness and isolation. Functioning social networks safeguards the elderly from loneliness. 5-20% to 20 of senior German citizens feel lonely and isolated. After the lockdown, almost all contact with other people stopped for months, which must have worsened these which must have worsened these feelings. For those who cannot leave the house unassisted, nursing services arrange senior social groups where the elderly are picked up once a week and then taken safely home again. It's not much but it's so important to be with other people again and devastating when no longer there terminal care <clears throat> yes every individual has the right to reach an old age as possible but every person nearing the end of their life should also have the right to decide how they want to go most do not fear the end as the time approaches people become increasingly detached and willing to embark on their last journey when we talk about the older people and we are told that it is our moral duty to protect them, many pictures surprise many pictures sorry, I'm just gonna read this again. When we hear talk about the older people and we are told that it's our moral duty to protect them, many pictures sprightly seniors who are enjoying their time on ocean liners in reality the endangered elderly are multi-morbid individuals at the end of their lives people who have not been able to leave their beds for days weeks or months people whose tumors have spread throughout their body and are in constant pain People who cannot go on anymore and maybe do not want to go on. People who sometimes just wait for a kind fate to relieve them of their suffering. Amidst all the protective measures for the high risk groups in retirement and nursing homes at the end of the individual decision should have the highest priority. Most no longer care whether their loved ones bring the coronavirus to them as long as someone is there to hold their hand, to talk about the past and to whisper, I love you and farewell. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Innocent and vulnerable. Our children, children like the elderly are the most vulnerable in our society and it's our duty to care for them. Millions of children in the world are suffering acutely from the coronavirus measures. The coronavirus strikes more children and their family than those who are actually gripped by the infections, says Coralinus Williams, head of the UNICEF Child Protection League. Mental psychological stress. Children cannot thrive without social contacts. Separation from key people like grandma and grandpa, auntie and uncle, their best friends, the closed schools, inaccessible playgrounds and bad sports fields disrupt their lives. Social ethics point out how vital it is for children to be in contact with their peers. Educational deficits. Children have a right to education since the schools have been closed. Millions of students are lagging behind according to an estimate of the German Teacher Association. Their president Heinz Peter Mayan Mayaninga sees educational deficits for approximately 3 million children, especially in students from difficult social backgrounds and from impoverished families. 
physical violence. Tens of thousands of children in Germany become victims of violence and abuse every year. Crime statistics from 2018 show that three children die in the aftermath of, aftermath of physical violence every week. Ten children are physically or mentally abused every day. And 40 children are sexually abused every day. Excuse me, I'm sorry. And these, of course, are only the known cases. Can you imagine the situation in coronavirus times? When parents are stressed on the brink of losing their jobs and facing financial ruin. When arguments and quarrels become a daily occurrence. With increased alcohol consumption. When children are at home day after day with no way of escape. Teachers who normally play important roles in safeguarding endangered children. I'm just going to read that again. Teachers who normally play important roles in safeguarding endangered children are gone. Who then should notify the Youth Welfare Office should the need arise? The government's commissioners for abuse, Johan Willem Reigig, issued an urgent warning. There were indications from the quarantine towns of Wuhan that the cases of domestic violence had tripled during the trapped at home time. There were equally alarming numbers from Italy and Spain. Consequences for the world's poorest. Many in this country took the opportunity to get their homes and gardens back into shape during the coronavirus crisis. Understandable, understandably, since home office work was only semi-effective for want of equipment and slow internet connection, actually the majority of the middle class and the affu affu affluent were not doing badly. Well, the neighbour who now has to apply for Hearts 5 unemployment benefits will surely get back on his feet. People tend to think as far as their front door, maybe a bit beyond that, and that's it. Many are not aware that the most severe consequences often affect the poorest of the poor. One must not close one's eyes to the fact that the existence and lives of countless people are threatened. Existential consequences. In India, there are hundreds of millions of day labourers, many of whom led a hand to mouth existence before the coronavirus restrictions robbed them of their livelihoods. Now they have no means to survive. They are protected against the coronavirus and are in turn left to starve. I'm going to have to leave it there. Um, but I will um, continue on the next video.